My name is Kelly Phelps, and I work for Santa Lac County Community Mental Health. Thank you for joining me this evening. I'd like to talk to you today about a very important issue, the issue of suicide. Suicide can be a very difficult subject to discuss, so I hope after this presentation you feel a little more comfortable using the word and even helping somebody who may be experiencing a suicide crisis. Chances are many of you watching have been impacted by the issue of suicide. I say this because of the sheer number of suicides in any given year and the fact that for every suicide, there are 25 attempts. And for every death by suicide, at least 11 people experience a significant impact on their life. Sometimes that even means disability. Maybe even you have struggled with the immense emotions of despair and hopelessness that often accompany a suicide crisis. I want you to know that there is hope, that we can help those experiencing a suicide crisis. We can reach out to those that we know and that we love and offer them the hope that they need to go on. Before we get started today, I want to get you some insight on what we'll be talking about. Shedding light on the issue of suicide. So tonight we'll talk about the suicide rates in the US and Michigan and why suicide happens. We'll talk about the warning signs and the risk factors often associated with a suicide crisis and how we can help those who may be experiencing a suicide crisis. We'll review the resources that you'll need to know to assist somebody. And then I'll offer you some more information of how you can learn more to help those who may be experiencing emotional distress. Suicide in the US in 2018, over 48,000 people died by suicide. <clears throat> suicide rates have increased 35% since 1999. That means now 14.2 people per 100,000 die each year by suicide. Suicide rates among males are 3.7 times higher than females. And white middle-aged males have the highest rates of all age groups. However, females will attempt suicide one and a half times more than males. This all means that 132 people die each day by suicide. Obviously, suicide does not discriminate. It doesn't care about your socioeconomic standing, whether you're male or female, or what background you come from. Suicide impacts us all. In Michigan, over 1,500 people died by suicide in 2018. That's 15.5 people per 100,000. And consistent with the national averages, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death overall for all age groups. However, it is the second leading cause of death for those aged 10 to 34. So, why does suicide happen? Suicide is a very complex issue. Generally, more than one factor in a person's life converge in, or, um, to precipitate a suicide crisis. Most people will exhibit warning signs. Shame, helplessness, hopelessness, and despair often accompany a suicide crisis. Having a mental health issue is often associated with a suicide crisis, particularly untreated depression. Research is currently ongoing in areas such as thinking and genetics and predispositions towards suicide, also treatment and prevention efforts. As noted, there are risk factors surrounding suicide, 
It's important to remember that not everybody with these risk factors will become suicidal. And that suicide is a complex issue where these risk factors and warning signs, which we'll review, will converge to create a suicide crisis. There are many risk factors, as he mentioned, having a mental health issue, particularly untreated depression. Having a chronic illness or chronic pain is often associated with a suicide crisis. A previous attempt at suicide puts a person at higher risk for a suicide crisis. A history of trauma, childhood abuse, or being exposed to war, or losing someone by a death to suicide, or when a famous person or an icon dies by suicide. Having a substance use disorder, particularly alcohol and opioids, puts a person at a higher risk of suicide. Loss of financial stability, loss of a job, a home, or a business. In addition to the risk factors, the warning signs are very important to watch out for. These warning signs will often begin to manifest prior to a suicide crisis and then be ongoing as the crisis escalates. Talking about wanting to kill yourself, having a lot of despair, hopelessness, no forward thinking. Perhaps a person begins to research death, how to die, or stockpiling pills, or buys a weapon, or collects other items towards their suicide attempt. Other warning signs may be experiencing great guilt or shame, uh, talking about feelings of being alone and that there are no solutions to their problems, Again, talking about being a burden to others as well. Using drugs or alcohol more often and engaging in risky behaviors. As you can see, some warning signs and risk factors would apply to some age groups and not others. I wanted to draw particular attention to the warning side of withdrawing from friends. If you have an adolescent, it's quite normal for them to withdraw some from family and want to spend more time with friends. However, if they're withdrawing from their friends and their normal activities that they enjoy and being secretive with their family, it could be time to be concerned and have a conversation. There may be signs of rage, talk of revenge, talking about death often, displaying extreme mood swings. This could also mean going from one extreme of anger, agitation, or great sadness to another where they show great calm and a lack of concern. We call this the calm before the storm. Sometimes this means that a decision has been made. Giving away prized possessions saying goodbyes and putting affairs in orders are all potential warning signs of a suicide crisis. Again, suicide is a complex issue. It's generally a convergence of many factors before the crisis occurs. So the more warning signs and risk factors, the greater the risk of suicide crisis. If you know somebody who seems to be experiencing one or more of these warning signs or risk factors, it may be time to have a conversation. But before we talk about how to have that conversation with somebody, let's talk about some of the myths and that surround the issue of suicide. These misconceptions will often keep people from approaching somebody who seems to be experiencing distress because they're afraid of making the situation worse or maybe they fear stigma. So to start with, suicide is not inevitable. If somebody appears to be contemplating suicide, they can be talked to, they can be approached. They will accept most likely and welcome your intervention. Talking to somebody about suicide will not put it in their mind. It will not make them start thinking about suicide when they weren't. In fact, it will probably lower their tension level and open them up to the possibility of hope and a different outcome for them. 
Most of us believe that only experts can prevent suicide. But the fact is, you and I, with the right understanding of the warning signs and the risk factors, and knowing what our local resources are, are generally the first step in stopping a suicide crisis. You and I can save lives. Other myths surrounding suicide is that most people keep it to themselves. But most people actually do give warning signs. They usually say something. It's for us sometimes to learn what those warning signs are and what those sayings may be. Things like, it won't matter tomorrow. Pretty soon, that won't be a problem anymore. Sometimes these little hints are the things that we pick up on in our loved ones that indicate that there's a crisis situation brewing. People don't give us indicators of suicide because they're seeking attention, but because they need help. It's a cry for help. People in that type of despair really don't want to die. They want their pain to end. They want a lifeline of hope, and you and I can be that lifeline of hope. Reaching out, so what do you do? It's very important before approaching somebody who you suspect is suffering from a crisis situation that you have the time. Make sure that you're not rushed. Pick a quiet, private place to have the conversation. Give the person time, time to express how they're feeling. Be comfortable with silences. It's okay, sometimes it's hard to find the right words. Use I statements. I care about you. I'm on your side. I'm here for you. Make sure that you leave any judgment, pressures, or your own feelings of what the solution should be out of the conversation. This is a time to listen and to empathize and to show that you care. When it comes time to ask the question, make sure that you are in the right frame of mind. Don't ask the question with fear or dread and don't beat around the bush. This is a time to be direct. Let me just demonstrate it for you for just a moment. I'm gonna make sure that I'm sitting or standing in a comfortable position. Look the person comfortably in the eye using a softer tone of voice and quite directly ask, when someone's feeling as sad as you are, sometimes they think about taking their life. Are you thinking about suicide? And then wait for their response. If they respond yes, it's time to reach out for some hope, for some help. We need to know our local resources and we are going to review those in just a moment. If they're resistant to getting help, continue the conversation with them for a little while. Find out why. Perhaps they've had a bad experience. You can reassure them that there are options and that you will be with them as we reach out for help. Include them in the conversation of where to go for help, giving them options. Perhaps they can identify somebody who has been supportive to them in the past. They might wanna call a friend, a pastor, or their spouse, or a trusted therapist to be with them. And never, never agree to keep suicide thoughts secret and never leave someone alone who has said that they want to die by suicide. Our local resources in Santa Lac County include the National Crisis Hotline, the National Crisis Text Line, and our local crisis line. You can also take someone to the nearest emergency room or dial 911. The last option is usually the least favorable, 
But sometimes we just have to stand firm and say, if you won't reach out for help, this is what we're going to have to do. We can't go without getting help. And I care about you, and I don't want you to die. This can be a tough thing to do. I would encourage you to practice, if you have a chance, before having a conversation with someone. Finally, this presentation wasn't intended to be a complete overview of how to help somebody experiencing an emotional crisis. There are lots of resources available if you would like to learn more. Mental Health First Aid is an eight-hour class where you will learn the signs and symptoms of the major mental health disorders in the United States. Also, we'll teach you how to help somebody in various crisis situations, whether it's the onset of a potential mental health issue, a traumatic event, or someone struggling with a substance use disorder. These classes are free and are offered through Santa Lake County Community Mental Health. You can call us at 810-648-0330 for more information. Classes are registering now, but due to COVID, space is limited, so call today. And the last thing I wanted to say before we end is while you're listening to this, if you feel that you've identified with the warning signs and risk factors and need help, please know that you are not alone. Reach out to one of these crisis lines or a trusted friend or family member today. You don't have to go through this alone. There is hope and there is help. Thank you.